Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am your host of the Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast, along with my wife, Amanda. Uh, We investigate everything paranormal, uh, be it ghosts, Bigfoot, UFOs, hauntings, poltergeist activity, demons, UFOs, um, river monsters, lake monsters, cryptids. You name it, we basically investigate it. So, um, oh no. Yeah, rock the shirt, baby. I don't know how long that's going to go on for, so bear with me. I accidentally hit the button. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, today we're going to be talking about Bigfoot, because this is the Bigfoot Only podcast. Tomorrow, the Cryptid Only podcast will come out. Um, so here's, I was talking about future plans in my review of 20, uh, 22. And so I wanted to kind of share those plans with you guys. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do this first as an expedition where people can come out with us and go look for Bigfoots, or if it's just something I'm going to do solo, where I'm going to go out and, uh, investigate first to see if I can find anything. Sorry, my hat's all weird. Um, so let's get into this. Let's, uh, share my screen with you. Let me share this with you. Oh yeah. I forgot about this. So if you guys want to buy us a coffee, it basically helps support our channel, helps support our cause, helps us to continue to, uh, do the research and, um, continue to look for all things paranormal and, uh, stuff. So it just helps us, um, we are now also uh, getting some help from uh, Manscaped. If you want to go on to manscaped.com um, put in DWP, you can get a discount there. Uh, really cool products. I'll be reviewing their products throughout the next few podcasts. Um, and kind of talking about, you know, what kind of stuff uh, I've, I've been using and uh, what products I've been using and essentially um, how I like them. So let's move on from this because I talk about this all the time. All right. We're looking at, actually, this is kind of backwards. Let me start here. Okay. So I got a dog at my feet too. Um, All right. So I am looking at doing an expedition out to the area around center. Um, Sorry. I got a little guy visiting me here. Little gremlin. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the center area and look around at different locations. I have a friend that lives closer, a little bit south of of center. Um, so we're going to go out into this area. We This is where Joe's camp is. I don't know if we're going to go into Joe's camp. Uh, I don't know if he's available or what his schedule is or anything like that. I have to talk to him first. Um, I did leave him a message, so we'll see if he calls me back. But the woods all around, I'm going to zoom in here, the root, the, the woods all around his area, especially up in this thicket, um, all have a lot of Bigfoot sightings. Um, so, I mean, we could basically go into any of these thickets as long as it's not 
private land, which a lot of it is, and um, look around and see what's going on. Um, this is Gulf South Pipeline. Um, this is a place I've checked out before. Uh, can't really camp in this area. But uh, again, this is East Texas, if you're wondering. Uh, we're going to be looking at places around here uh, to go basically investigate. Now, what I'm looking for is bodies of water. Now, if you come across over here, this is the Sabine National Forest. All this whole area is all. Let me zoom all the way out. Okay. So in this chunk of land, you got the Sabine National Forest. Um, I put in camping because I'm trying to find the right campsite for me. Um, I might stay at one campsite. I might stay at two campsites. I just don't know at this point in time. I need to see availability. And I also need to see where I'm going to go. I'm looking at now, now February is supposed to be cold again. So um, there's a possibility of ice and possibly snow. I don't know what this area over here towards Louisiana is going to get. They may actually might get snow. So um, as much as I like camping, I don't want to camp in the snow um, just because it does get too cold. Um, up there, they get into the teen temperatures. And if you remember me talking about the last time I went to Joe's camp, I froze my uh, yin yangs pretty much off the whole night. It was very uncomfortable, um, even though I did have some Bigfoot activity, uh, possibly with things pushing in on the side of my tent um, on his property. Uh, I don't think I'd want to go into, you know, go up there when it's that cold again. I, I think, I don't know if they go out, I don't know if the Bigfoots go out in the cold or not. Uh, they may just hunger down if it's severely cold like that, or or maybe they move around. Who knows? Anyway, so I'm looking at multiple campsites along this river, along the um, Sabine National River. Um, actually, I think this is a lake. So this is a, a lake here. Uh, it won't show me because I'm actually focused in on the uh, campgrounds. But uh, I, I think this is a bean lake. It's, it's big. This is around here somewhere is maybe up, it was up here, I think, is where we found the clamshells. Um, and then we found the huge 22 inch footprints and the two structures. I'm going to have to talk to Joe about that. I think it was out here somewhere. It was somewhere along the lake. We were right down on the water. Um, and then we had black silhouettes darting around us as it started to get dark and uh, become really hard to see. Even with all the night vision in the world, it's really hard to see them when they're 20, 30, 40 feet away from you or more. Um, unless they're making a bunch of noise, it's going to be really hard to track them. So my, my plan of attack is to find a time where it's not going to be severely cold at night. Maybe 40s and 50s would be good. Uh, maybe a little bit warmer. And I want to go out to different places where there's been um, actual sightings. Uh, Joe is working on talking to a lot of people out here about that. Um, if I go solo, I may try and get onto some of these people's properties and camp on their properties overnight and just see if I experience anything. Uh, and then, of course, I'll be documenting everything and, and sharing it with you. But uh, I definitely want to get into some of these campgrounds because if you look around, I mean, this whole chunk of area is all Bigfoot territory. Uh, there was a guy that was camping in his car. He got in trouble. I guess he wasn't legally allowed to be there. And uh, so as I always tell people, make sure you're legally allowed to be wherever you're at. But um, he was camped out there and he was down there looking for Bigfoots. So he was camped in the back of his car overnight. And I guess he was making too much noise and people called and, and reported him. So uh, I want to get to an area where it's more secluded, more, maybe more thickets. Um, I know, let me come back out here. I know this area over here has a lot of different activity. I know it. So um, this is over where Joe lives. I'm not going to give his exact location. But this thicket over here seems to have quite a bit of activity. Uh, let me see if I can find... Yeah, here's, is this a power lines? It must be, must be flipped. Okay. Let's 
So this must be the power lines here. Okay. So what we can do is we can follow this power lines. And as you can see, it has lots of different areas it goes out to. Um, here's another set of power lines. There's just a lot of clearings out here, which might be good for Bigfoots to travel. Um, okay, so it comes kind of ends in this big area here. This looks like there might be a, you know, there definitely looks like there's a home here. This is somebody's private land, but look at up up above here. Look at all of this green forested area. Um, and then essentially it starts back up. The clearing comes all the way across out here. Okay. And then there's a new clearing. What I'm looking for is I'm looking to see if these clearings uh, go to the water. I want to see if they go down to the lake. This one seems to end here. Looks like it kind of starts back up and then comes across here. This is a road. And it looks like there's some kind of trail there. And then it goes down this way. And back into the forest. Okay. So here's an area I'd like to kind of check out. I don't know if there's even a way to get down to here. This is probably going to be a heavy-duty hike in. So I'm looking at Yellow Branch. And I don't know if this is a, you can camp here or not, but it looks like a pretty cool location. There's a lot of, this is down by the lake and the reason I like this place is because it's full of trees and stuff like that. It's not, no, well, yeah, it's pretty secluded and the further back you go. If you're watching the this YouTube video, um, the further back you go, the more basically um, more it's just forest and there's not very many things around uh, people wise. So this big chunk right here, this whole chunk right next to the, the lake here is probably a good place to go explore. I would imagine we need to find I need to find out if this is private land or if it's actually um, an area where we can go. Here's an interesting thing. Here's a cemetery, East Hamilton Cemetery. Um, Bigfoot seem to frequent cemeteries. Here's Duncan Cemetery to the north of that. And these are both pretty close to the the water. Um all right, so I really wanted to kind of check out some campgrounds. Let's go over here because I found one. Oh, look, somebody found Bigfoot. <laughs> this is called Bill's Landing. Uh, I'm just going through the the pictures. Uh, it's right next to the lake. And essentially, uh, there's two guys and a guy in the middle with a monkey suit on. Um, but uh, pretending to be Bigfoot. But I mean, let's look at some of these pictures. So this looks like swampland. This looks like typical Bigfoot territory. Um, so what you're seeing is a bunch of trees uh, with the roots kind of sticking up and stuff like that. These I forget what kind of trees these are, but they're uh, very well protected. People are not allowed to cut them down and stuff like that. Um, they're not found very often. But I mean, Bigfoots could cruise through here, find some food. I imagine this is full of water normally. Um, so here's a guy fishing. Here's a little bit better view of the lake. A lot of guys with a bunch of uh, fish. There's a guy on the road, the lake. And that's the end of the picture. So let me go back up. I'm going to scroll up. Here's another picture of roots. You can see the lake out here. I imagine the water normally comes up to here. Um, but this is where Bigfoots are said to live. They love swampy areas. Probably because people don't come into these areas. Um, yeah, these are beautiful trees. Let me just see if there's any other better pictures here. And you're welcome to come to the Deep Woods Paranormal page. Um, or the uh, the uh, YouTube, excuse me, page. So this is called Bill's Landing. Um, 
Let me go back here. Bill's Landing is, again, right on the um, lake here. I think this is the Sabine Lake, or it's the Sabine River, one of the two. It's massive. Okay, so Bill's Landing looks like it's kind of inland a little bit, which is interesting. It might be a little too far inland for me, of course. There's a big thicket across the way. There's the cemetery real close. And it's not really that far from the, the water. But there's a lot. Let's see. It looks like there's a lot of human activity in this area. There's homes and stuff like that. Um, I think more than likely if, if, if they were coming through here, uh, they would basically just be... Uh, did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com renew to learn more. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clapper, a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Maybe just cruising down to the water. Cutting through. So I don't think Bill's Landing is going to work for me. Let me cruise out of here. Um, okay, so this is another one I saw. This is actually called, it's called Ragtown Campground in the Sabine National Forest, which is where I want to be. So this one has a little bit more, um, sorry, my uh, phone dinged. This one has a little bit more opportunity to maybe have something. I think somebody said that they saw a Bigfoot in this area. Um, so I wouldn't mind coming down here. This is, looks like it's very secluded. If if I zoom out, I don't see any human activity in this big, huge, thick area. Um, there's water to the one side, and there's forest inland of, the for, of that, west of it. And as you come out, I mean, there's just nothing here. What's interesting is that... Yes, it is. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay. So this is an area I might want to come. And I'm going to save this. As I want to go. Let's see if we can pick up any pictures. There's only three pictures. Oh, yeah. So you can see the water right there. What is that? Must be the shore. It's not a very good picture, but it's real close to the water. I mean, if I was a Bigfoot, I would probably avoid the campground, of course, but I would come down and uh, cruise by there and see, you know, what I could do. All right. Um, okay. So that's one option is this Ragtown's uh, Ragtown campground. Uh, because it's not very far from my friend's house. Um, we could go over there during the day and look around for some signs of Bigfoot. Uh, it's going to be kind of quiet since he cut down the trees. So let's go on to the next one. Where is this Bold Fields Campground? It's also in the Sabine National Forest. Okay, so that's a little north uh, west. Well, let's take a look at this area. 
So this is the planning I do. When I look at where do I want to go? What do I want to try and accomplish? You know, what are my goals for this expedition? Um, are there Bigfoot reports around this? Uh, so if we go in here. Okay. So this is looks like a small campground. What I like about this, it's out in the middle of the forest. There's a cemetery across the way um, down to the um, southwest. There's two cemeteries within very short distance. Three cemeteries, excuse me. Uh, so, and, and like I said, Bigfoots do like to frequent cemeteries. I don't see any water sources around here. So when I go to look for stuff, I go to look for water sources and stuff like that. There's a water source down here. This looks like a person's farm. Probably somebody's personal property. And essentially the water's down here. And there's a lot of, again, a lot of people. So this is not very far from Bill's Landing, if you're watching this podcast. Bill's Landing is about a little bit, almost on like a diagonal line northeast of this Bullsfields campground. I do like this location. I would like to check it out. In fact, I'm going to mark it as I want to go. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is sit down and list all these places um, and then essentially pick one. Uh, we may end up staying on Joe's property too, if he allows us. This time, I'm going to push the boundaries. I'm going to go set my tent up I don't even know if it's safe to do it with all the, the trees and stuff, but I might set up either a tent or I might set up a hammock in some of the trees um, where they come through and just see what the heck happens. Um, might be creepy if they come down and do some stuff. I'd have to leave an audio recorder um, hanging in one of the trees overnight, um, maybe protected by some kind of uh, cup or something. So anyways, okay, so let's move on. This is Ragtown. Ooh, this one looks interesting. This one looks like it has some promise. Okay, so here's Ragtown. This is right on the water. I think I looked at this already. No, I don't think I did. Oh, wow. Look at this. This is right on the water. Oh, I think I did look at this. I think Ragtown is one of, and it has bathrooms, which is great. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. Hmm. So I'm looking at one of their pictures of the bathroom, and it looks... Almost like a tree structure back here, which would be interesting. Depends on how much the campgrounds are actually used. And then fishing, of course, which is a good source for the, the Bigfoots. And they have barbecues, which is awesome, so we could cook up stuff. You can actually go in the water. I don't know if I would. I might be camping in the back of my tent. I mean, my back of my truck, to be honest with you. Huh. This looks pretty interesting. That person had a hammock out. That's pretty cool. Maybe they were going to sleep in the hammock for the night. They have an RV. Man and I are looking at getting an RV as well. I don't know when that's going to happen. but So, yeah. I mean, this looks, this looks very promising to me. Um, what I'll have to do is I'll have to talk to Joe. I'm sure we can get like four or five tents on one of these campgrounds. All right. Well, yeah, Ragtown looks very promising. Um, I want to make sure I can see it as I want to go. All right. So let's look at the Sabine National Forest. Okay. So what did this come up as a campground? Let's just see if this shows. Oh, it does show camping. 
Okay, so this is right on the water. I think we've been down here before. No. Mm -mm. This is interesting. So this looks a little too... Let me go back to this. I don't think this pen is in the right place unless there's a water source somewhere. No, I don't think this pen's in the right place. This must supposed to be down close to the water, I'm guessing. Okay. But yeah, this is this is a place I've been before. This would be National Forest. Maybe, I don't know why that came up. Let's look at Red Hill Lake Campground and the Sabine National Forest. Where is this at? Okay. So again, a little more a little more inland. What's this? Red Hills Lake. Oh, okay. So it's right next to a lake. That's very interesting. Let's check out the pictures here. I see people swimming. This is a pretty good size of lake. Man, people need to learn how to use their cameras, phones better. And we wonder where we get blob squatches. People have got pictures all every which way. Yeah, this is a very forested area. Um, again, water source for Bigfoot. Okay, let's go back out here for a second. And this all this also been saved. So I'm gonna actually mark this to yeah, okay, it's already marked as one ago. All right, so this is an interesting area. Um, where is Okay, so this is a little bit south of where I normally would be. I mean, we could, honestly, I don't know how much time I'm going to have to go out here. Probably just a weekend, a Friday and a Saturday, or a Saturday and a Sunday. Um, we could basically stay, you know, just basically work our way up the area and camp in a lot of these different um Where's this at? Well, yeah, I've already seen that. Sabine so National Forest, Indian Mounds Campground. Interesting. Indian Mounds. Okay, so where's Indian Mounds? Oh, okay, it's way down here. All right, so again, I like this at location two. Indian Mounds Wilderness, Indian Mounds Campground. This is also the Sabine National Forest. Look at all that thicket. I don't see people anywhere around here. They're all on the outskirts. Um, Willows Creek Park. There's a cemetery northeast of this location. Um... Chapel in the Pines, that's interesting. That's a church. I imagine there's cemeteries around here too. Not that I'm interested in cemeteries. I'm just looking to see. I'm going to zoom back out just for a second. Oh, yeah. Okay. So where does that come this way? Oops. Bear with me if you're, you're, you're watching this. Oh my gosh. Sorry, my Facebook account's blowing up right now. I posted a couple of things on there and now everybody's, which I'm very thankful for, by the way. Everybody's giving me some love, which I really appreciate the likes and the, the love and all that stuff on that account. Um, helps us again get our information out there and share our information with you. So if you're on uh, Facebook, it's Deepwoods Paranormal Lock. Deepwoods Paranormal. Um, or you can look up Matt Harvey. Okay, so yeah, I like this location. Um, I'm going to add this to my want to goes. I think a lot of these campgrounds, I mean, even if we just went up, 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 and in, and then, of course, Joe's going to have a million places to take us as well. We could kind of camp our way all the way up, up this whole lake. Um, I would imagine this whole section is going to be just really good Bigfoot territory. 
Okay, so let's take a look at some of the pictures here. Yeah, okay. So again, secluded, which is what I like. We have to probably rent a boat or get a boat somehow. There's some people fishing along the coast. Campgrounds. It's right on the water, which is cool. That's the lake. You can see how large that lake is. It's huge. Um, yeah, somebody's camping. Okay. We got a fish, which is cool. See, and this is kind of swampy-ish. Just bear with me. I, I'm saying ish, but... I mean, if I was a Bigfoot, you can... That also shows how big that lake is. Look, the, the coastline for the other... For Louisiana is way far away. Miles and miles. So, okay, so this is campgrounds. They're kind of right on top of each other. And we don't necessarily need to stay in a campground. We could probably... Uh, cruise around to other places uh, getting out on the water at night though maybe with a thermal imager and exploring different areas uh, in the area would be a good idea cruising along the shore at night and, and just trying to see if we could see any um, anything I mean, here again here's the water so, like I said, we found clamshells, and we found a trail that led up over, down a very steep embankment along this, um, I'm calling it, I think it's a river, the Sabine National, uh, National River, or lake. I'm not sure if it's a lake or a river. Um, anyways, it's just a very large body of water with uh, not very many people around, which is kind of cool. I think we've been through most of these... Oh, great. Camping fees are $4 per day? <laughs> okay, I'm in. <laughs> I can afford $8. <laughs> My kind of place. Yeah, so, I mean, this is a place I could tie a hammock where I could put a tent up. And uh, this would be interesting. Okay, the boat ramp is real close. Restrooms, that's always a positive. I mean, some of this area, I mean, you're right on the water, which would be cool. This is the kind of place I could take a manatee. She would actually go with me and maybe spend the night if we could find somebody to watch our dogs. She probably won't want to go camping, but unless she's glamping. Okay, so yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. What does this do? Open another... Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -chumba. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Oops. All right. So, I mean, there's lots of campgrounds along this area. Um, my goal would be kind of stay up closer where Joe's is. I think, I think Ragtown might just be it. Again, I really like the look of this location. 
Uh, the other one had more pictures. Hmm. But the Ragtown Campground looks like a place I would want to camp because I could basically go hiking inland anywhere. I could go take the car and go look around and, and explore. Um, I might just sleep in the back of my car. I might just set my tent up in uh, in the bed of my truck and go camping there. I might just take my hammock and pull over and, you know, basically camp in a secluded area where I don't think anybody's around. Um, that way, if something comes through, there's a good chance it could be, you know, something. But, all right. So, again, I'm sorry to be kind of vague. What I'm doing is I'm looking for different campgrounds. I'm, I'm setting up this expedition, either with people or without people. I have a lot of people that have said, Matt, let me know next time you're going out bigfooting. Because uh, this may not be the next time I go out bigfooting, but this is probably going to be the next um, expedition I do. Uh, I really want to go explore this area. It's, it's not very close to where I live, unfortunately. I live down here in College Station. And this is up on the Texas Louisiana border, but um, like I said, it, I know there's Bigfoots in this area. And if you look at all the blue and yellow markers all throughout here, um, you can see the campgrounds. You can see all the blue markers. Essentially, um, that's essentially. You know, let me close this so you can see a little better. You can see, and then you can see all the green markers I've posted. It's in the middle of a whole bunch of um, Bigfoot sightings. So definitely want to go check this area out a little bit more. You can see how big it is. It's massive. Uh, and then, of course, you go across the lake and there's more Bigfoot sightings on the other side of the lake or river or whatever this Sabine uh, National. Let me see if I can figure out what this says. This is uh, Toledo Bend River. Let me get a little bit. Let's see, where is that lake? Here we go. Just says Sabine National Forest. It doesn't say what it is. Texas, Louisiana. Okay. And so even if I zoom in, it doesn't show me. It says the uh, Toledo Bend Reservoir. So it's a reservoir. Um, essentially, it's just a lake that goes for a good amount of distance, miles and miles and miles. Um, I don't have the measure on here uh, on the setting, but yeah, I mean, you can see where I put my green pins. They're all around different areas where there's been Bigfoot sightings. And then, of course, you come up in this area, you can see the hearts. That's where I've had actual visual sightings of um, Bigfoots. Um, Marlin Creek Lake Park. This probably is a place that I've come by. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of pictures. Oh, it's a campground. All right, so I know this is a place I've driven by and I've gone, oh, I want to stop there and uh, go check this area out. There's probably a lot of Bigfoot sightings around this camp. I mean, look how, if you're watching the pictures fly by as I scroll through here, again, it's just very wooded kind of secluded i know exactly where this is this isn't far from joe's um place where people like to go it has i'm looking at the amenities too i'm not actually looking at the actual amenities but i'm looking at you know people's pictures to see what's in here uh so there's a way to cook food which is great and i don't have to use my little cooker i can actually cook real food um be interesting to maybe either get or rent a boat again to come through here. Uh, yeah. So we probably wouldn't get much in the actual campgrounds. We have to go out. We have to go out exploring into the other areas. I mean, you just go through and you can see the forest all around here. I've stopped through here. Okay. So let's zoom back in on this. So this is right next to Marlin Lake. Uh, very interesting. I have that is saved. Let me make sure that's also where we want to go. Um, so Marlin Lake. 
you can't see it, but this area is just full of forested areas. Um, unfortunately, it looks like there's a lot of human activity kind of in and around it. This is the park. Let me... So you can see, I've I've driven right past here. Uh, I've been on the road on this side and driven past it. I've been over here on the county line road. So I've driven right past this. Of course, there's a cemetery. And there's kind of a thicket over here. Now, this may look small from um, just looking at it. Um, on on the google maps but i i imagine this whole area is just very thick uh with woods uh, i imagine a lot of it's actually has some private property now you can see like a homestead here a homestead here a little homestead here possibly a homestead here um and i don't know how much land these people actually own but there's there's places to go in and uh look around but i like to stay here i mean amanda and i looked at renting a cabin here um so if we have enough interest we could do we could do that all right so but i want to make sure we're going into places that have bigfoot sightings around them so here's a bigfoot sighting here yep that's a bigfoot sighting there there's not a lot of Bigfoot sightings in this area. Here's another one. Nola County. Let's see what this is. Yeah, Bigfoot sightings. Okay. Any blue things you see. Panola County. This is a hot spot for Bigfoot, especially down here. What about this woods? I mean, this whole area is just forest it's all forest and stuff like that so also there's the davy crockett national forest i have not been in the davy crockett national forest yet we've driven by it multiple times and as you can see on the outskirts there are a lot of just little sightings all over around it let's do this let's look at this real quick So Davy Crockett, um, oops, what did I do? Uh, I put an extra word in there, an extra letter in there. Okay. National Forest. Let's see if there's any Bigfoot sightings. That they actually will show. Let's just take a peek here. Wait. What? Let's see. I'm move this over real quick. Trying to see where this is. All right, this is the website I use a lot. It doesn't really show. Here we go. Here's one. All right. So it says lengthy encounter in Davy Crockett National Forest for reported by a hunter, which is um, very, you know, it does not, um, it doesn't uh, surprise me. Let's put it that way. So this was from November, 2004 in Trinity County. So let's go back here and look at where, where did my map go? I lost my map. Bear with me. I got to go back and get my...
All right, let's go back to layers. All right, so we were looking at the Davy Crockett National Forest. Right here, where is Trinity? Trinity should be pretty close. So again, we're just looking up this Bigfoot report. We want to see where it happened. Let's see, Trinity, Texas. Okay, so this is Trinity. Let's find where is the, okay, so it was, wow. So Trinity's way down here. And of course, there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings in this area. Where you see the one blue pin um, doesn't necessarily mean it's only one sighting. I'm going to save this as Bigfoot sighting. So I know to look in Trinity, and then I can I can look further into this. All right, so it was in this area somewhere, probably. Say David Crockett National Forest is where way up there. Uh, okay, I drive by these areas all the time. It's very forested. Let's go back to the report. All right, so this happened um, at 8 a.m. Partly cloudy, clear day. Cool, swampy open area surrounded by uh, Palmetto Flats, Alabama Creek Wildlife Management Area, Davy Crockett National Forest. Okay, so they really didn't give us a real good location of where he was. Okay, so it says, I was deer hunting that morning. I got it situated and climbed into my tree stand overlooking a grassy area uh, adjacent to the Meha Pond. Okay, so he was close to a water source. So that's cool. I was near a slough off the Neches River. Let's go find the Neches River. Let me see how you spell that. I completely misspelled that. Okay, so here's the Natchez River. Let's see where this is. So that's ne right next to Sabine. No, that can't be right. Okay, let's use technology. I am copying and pasting. Let's see if I can find this. All right, so this takes me way far away from Davy Crockett National Forest. It takes me way down to Houston. This says it was in... Okay. Anyways, I had been standing around that morning since 5 a.m. Several hogs were in the shorter grass uh, rooting. When the, layers, when, the, when the largest sow spooked... And then all of them ran off towards the woods. I, saw, I, I then saw a large man. I thought he was walking slowly, looking around. I saw that the the I saw that it was covered with a brownish fur. It was male, obviously. I uh, I studied through the binoculars, which is cool, at a distance of twenty five or thirty yards. So hunters are very they're very skilled at observing and basically taking mental notes of what they see they see a lot of stuff out there i've talked to multiple hunters um and the more they do the research i mean the more they go out and hunt the more stuff they come back and tell me about which is cool um most of it you know 99.9% .9 of it's not paranormal but they do tell me where they saw things and and stuff like that and and uh, where the deer are, where the hogs are, because that's what Bigfoot supposedly is looking for. Okay. Uh, okay. So he kept looking behind him and pausing. I judged him to be approximately eight and a half to nine feet tall, extreme broad shoulder, thick muscle body, uh, smooth stride. Then another smaller one followed. I assumed this was to be a female. Uh, she had, uh, you know, boobies and uh, no indication of male 
um, stuff down there. Uh, she stood six to seven feet tall. The height was judged by the trees that were standing next to. I could hear soft muttering and whist whistlings coming from them as they as they looked at each other. So they were communicating. Uh, they were turned. They were turning over fall limbs and eating something from under them. So probably grubs or worms or bugs or who else? Who knows what else? They also ate leaves off of several trees around them. Oh, that's interesting. She was blondish, light brown hair, rather short in length, yet he uh, was strongly built. I watched them for another 30 minutes uh, before they got out of sight. I waited another half an hour before climbing down. I went to check the site and found tracks and noticed an odor that was stronger uh, than the hogs. It seemed more musky scent, not entirely unpleasant as a hog scent. Uh, I wore a size 13E, triple E, and the larger male feet had, uh, the larger male had feet half again as long as my own. So 13 minus uh, about 19 inches. The female didn't seem to leave uh, very pronounced tracks, although they were visible. I'm six foot two. And his stride was almost double mine. Um, it sounds very close to me. I have not talked about this to anyone to, uh, since that day. Simply wanted to share it to someone who appreciated it. And I do appreciate it. Thank you for whoever posted this here. And thank you for whoever reported it. Um, you know, we get reports every once in a while. You're welcome to come on our Facebook channel. Uh, come on to our YouTube channel and send a private message. You can go on our Deep Woods Paranormal channel. I mean, our Deep Woods Paranormal page. Um, send us a private message there. Uh, our email and phone number are usually in um, the description down below. So you can contact us that way. You can text or message, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you have a, a report you want to report, uh, your information will be completely uh, and utterly um, not shared with anybody. It'll be private. Uh, and, you know, we, of course, we don't judge. So just please don't report fake stuff. Uh, we get that all the time. And we go look at the location and we're like, ah, okay, really? This person just wasted our time. But if you have a real report, we were, we're happy to come out and check it out and see what's going on. Uh, if you're here in Texas, if you're in another location, you know, we can always do a video chat. You can take us out video, video wise and show us around and stuff like that. And we'll put it on our map for other people to basically go and check out. So, okay. Uh, let's see. I have not talked about this since the day, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've hunted those woods my whole life, fished and river, uh, fished in, in, in the river and camped. I've heard strange sounds in the bottoms, but this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. It was almost spiritual in some way. They seem to be gentle creatures, very vocal with each other. I hope that they lived happily ever, ever are not discovered by some boys who frequent the woods these days. Because uh, they are likely to kill one. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So it says physical evidence. They found track. He did find tracks. Um, he said he, sounds he that he heard was yes, mewing, gruddle, gruddle, short whistling sounds, some grunts. Myself and others have heard screams and howls, uh, not like that of a coyote or a dog, not a cougar. I've heard of them all, even a screech and hoot that it didn't sound like this. I hear grunts and whistles usually at night. Additional observations. A musky, rather pleasant odor, strong, but not uh, terrible. So Mike Hall was an investigator on this, which is cool. Oh, I wonder if we can go through and steal this. I can see exactly where he got this from. All right. So let's look up Alabama Creek. Hopefully this is not in another state. Oh, whoops. Creek WMA. 
you're welcome to go check this out for yourself too. What did all of a sudden just get cold in here? Okay. Let's see where he was. Okay, let's double check this with this map. Yep. And then there should be Brookshire Brothers. Okay, so there should be a town here. Looks like the 69A. Let's see if the 69A is around here somewhere. Yep. There's the 69. Okay. So this is where he was. Let me put this under Bigfoot sightings. Okay, so let's cruise out and see if there's other sightings in this area. There are. So let's see what makes this an interesting sighting. Um, there's a campground here. But this is a big thicket area. Uh, looks like there's... No, I don't know if that's water or not. I can't tell. Looks like there's a water source here. If there's hogs and stuff, then that makes sense. Looks like there's a water source over here. It says Little Cedar Creek. And then also, let's look over here. Okay, this is really close to... Yeah, this is close to Davy Crockett. And stuff like that. So I'm looking around the Davy Crockett forest. You know, guys, this is getting a little long. Um, I don't want to keep going because last time, every it seems like my podcasts go for an hour. You guys hear, sit there and listen to me r- ramble on, which I appreciate. Let me stop sharing this. Okay. So that's kind of what goes into looking for different locations. Where do we need to go? Where should we go? And, uh, you know, if we we want to find a Bigfoot. Number one, you have to kind of go look at locations where people have had sightings. Number two, you have to find uh, like a water source. You have to find a food source. You know, if it's right next to a city, uh, more than likely they are just cruising through there. But if it's in a thicket area, there's hogs and other things in that area, and you get, um, you know, water source or river, creek, whatever, there's a good chance there could be something there. So it's always worth going to look at. Either, you know, Amanda and I spend a lot of time just driving around uh, in different areas and looking around. So I think next Friday, we'll take a deeper dive into maybe the Davy Crockett National Forest. But uh, let me know if you want to go on the expedition. Uh, I'm looking at maybe March or April where it won't be hopefully too hot or too cold. Uh, be a good time to go out and camp right before summer. Um, before we get into the blazing heat of summer. And uh, like I said, I don't know if we're going to stay at Joe's camp and then just kind of use his his camp as a base area to go out and explore other areas. Joe's camp is a special place. I've talked about it so many times. Um, if you want to listen to me jar on about Joe's camp, you can go uh, find his uh, podcast or you can go watch our YouTube video on, there's two different YouTube videos on his property. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're there. They're just harder and harder now to see because they're pushing back a little further and they're a little more, um, aware of us and a little bit more probably afraid since he cut down all the trees. Uh, they don't come down as close as they used to, at least where we can see them. So again, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you're on our YouTube channel, please go hit that like and subscribe button. If you're not, um, you know, feel free to come on over to the YouTube channel uh, or a Rumble channel. Uh, we have Deep Woods Paranormal on Rumble as well. And uh, I will add that link into the, the uh, description down here. Uh, you guys can listen to us there as well. And then feel free to come over to social media. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and a few other things, Instagram. Uh, feel free to come on over there and uh, check us out as well. And feel free to leave a comment. Uh, We appreciate you, and we will catch you on the next one.